Today, I'm going to show you another way that you can remove the background gradients from your astrophotography images. We're going to use an external utility called Graxper. It's been around for, I think, about a year now, so I'm a little bit late to the game reviewing it. And even though during this video, I'm going to be referring to Serial quite a bit, this isn't strictly for Serial. Again, this is an external application. So if you're running Serial, you're running PixInsight, you're running AstroPixel Processor, any program that has a background extraction function within it, you can use this utility as a replacement for that inbuilt function. It does a really great job of removing the gradients from the images. Some people even say they think it does a little bit better than even the inbuilt function of PixInsight. I'm not going to make that kind of a claim of whether you're using Serial or PixInsight. I'll leave that up to you guys to judge. This is simply another tool to put in your toolbox to use in your processing workflow if you decide that you want to take that route with it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, so head on over to Graxpert.com. This is a cross-platform application. You can download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm running on Windows today, so I'm going to download for Windows. Okay, so once it's finished downloading, we'll jump over to my downloads directory, and there it is. It's a single executable. There's no installation of anything. You simply double-click the executable to run it. Before doing that, I like to move it out of the downloads directory. I have a specific astrophotography folder on my C drive where I keep stuff like this. So I got a folder called Graxpert and I'm just going to paste it in right over there. And before we run it, I'm going to show you exactly where you would inject this into your workflow using Serial. Now, Graxpert can be used as a replacement for any background extraction in any utility. So whether you're using Serial, PixInsight, AstroPixel Processor, any of the utilities that have a background extraction function within them, you can skip using that inbuilt function and use Graxpert in its place. So for Serial, and I have Serial open right here, and just like always, I have my calibration frames broke out in the folders and my lights frames, and then I set my working directory to that folder structure and just ran the OSC preprocessing script. When it was done, I'm left my, with my result.fit file, right? This is my stacked image containing all my lights and my calibration frames. At this point within Serial, we would open up this fit file and we would do a crop and then we would do our background extraction. But those are the two steps we're going to skip since we're using Graxpert today. So we're going to leave Serial open. We've got our stacked image and we're going to double click to run Graxpert. Windows Defender may pop up and give you this warning. This is just because they don't have a certificate for their application. Not a big deal. Just click run anyways. And very simple interface, very easy to use tool. On the left hand side here, they actually have the steps broken out in order that you should proceed with. So one through five, with the exception being the crop is up on top here. But we will start with step number one, and that's to load the image. And that's the stacked image that we just got out of the serial script. So our result.fit file. Going to click open. And just like happens in Serial, it opens it up in a linear view. So this is not stretched. So that's why most of it is black. To be able to see what is in the image, and let's jump over to Serial right here. So just like whenever we open up an image in Serial and we come down, here, let me just open this up. If I was to open the same file in Serial, it's in linear. I'm going to come over to linear and change it to auto stretch so I can see what I'm working with. Similar in Graxpert is under your stretch options. Right now it says no stretch. We can stretch it by 10, 15, 20, or 30%. 10 being the less aggressive, obviously, and then working your way up from there. At this stage, at this point of the program, I would recommend going all the way up to 30%. That way you can see more of the gradient that's affecting the image. You can see any stacking artifacts along the edge. Just with that aggressive stretch like that, it makes it easier to see the work with. So now that we're stretched and we can see what we're dealing with, we're going to come up to the crop function, hit the plus button. We're going to click on crop mode on and off, and you'll see the yellow border coming around with the circles in the corners. Just hold your left mouse button down, draw a crop area around the image. Once you're happy with where you have that set, you come back over here and click apply crop. So our crop is done. Before we move forward, I also wanted to point out that if you hold your left mouse button down anywhere on the screen, you can drag the image around. And if you scroll your mouse wheel, there's your zoom in and zoom out. So step one's done. We've loaded the image. We've stretched it. You can also play with increasing or decreasing the saturation. If you deem that necessary, it'll sometimes help 
bring out more of the background gradients. Um, I'm going to leave that at one though, because I'm fine with that. Our next step is our sample selection. Uh, display points just is just that. It'll show you the, the sample points as it places them. I'm going to skip flooded generation just for the moment. We'll get back to that in a second. Points per row is how many samples it's going to put across the image in a horizontal line. And your grid tolerance is how tolerant it will be to placing those samples. So the lower the number, the less samples it'll automatically place. The higher the number, the more samples it'll automatically place. So at the defaults right now, if I was just to click create grid, here's the automatic sample placement that it did for us. If I was to increase my grid tolerance up and click create grid again, it's going to fill the entire image for me. If I was to go the other way down and make it even smaller and hit create grid, then it's even less. So this is just the way with an image like this, I, since a lot, most of the image is showing the DSO that I shot, I tend just to crank it up pretty high and let it put it across the board for me so it doesn't miss any of the corners or anything. And then I'll go through and manually remove these samples myself, which brings me to my next point, manually removing the samples. Just like with any background extraction function or tool, you don't want your samples on your nebulosity, your galaxy, the DSO that you're shooting, and you also don't want them to be on any bright or large stars. So in Graxpert, to remove the samples, just like in Cyril, right click. The thing that's different in Graxpert that Cyril does, that Graxpert does not, is you can't double right click to remove them. So it's just one at a time. So we can come through here and remove the samples that we know should not be sitting there. And, you know, for example, if I took this one out, if there was any parts of the image where I wanted to add samples, just a simple left mouse button click will put one wherever you choose. One thing that Graxpert does that uh, Cyril doesn't is instead of removing and replacing a sample to move it, you can actually hold your left mouse button down and drag that sample point around. So it might be a little bit easier way just to bump it around versus deleting and recreating it. The other thing is if you come down here on the right hand side where it says advanced, you have some options for your samples. Sample size, pretty self-explanatory. Right now we're at a size of 20. I could take that up as far as 50 or down as far as five. Uh, where, you, where would you use this? Well, I wouldn't use it on an image with this many stars in the foreground, I wouldn't make my sample size that big, right? Because that gets back to you don't want your sample sizes on bright or large stars. And there's just too many stars in here. I would never be able to get a sample point anywhere close to not hitting a star with something this large. Um, so as the star field that you have in your image becomes more dense, I would suggest making your sample sizes smaller, just small enough so you can get the background without hitting any of the stars. So 25 is the default. I bumped this down to 20 for this one. Uh, the second option is a sample color. This is really nice too, because I know there's been times for me with uh, the background extraction in Cyril that the default red color of the samples can sometimes be hard to see. So just moving your slider around, you can change the colors. So whatever you prefer. Like I said, defaults 55, which is yellow. And we'll come back to the rest of these advanced settings here in just a moment. So I'm going to go through and I am going to right click and remove all these samples from the nebulosity before we actually execute the next step. Okay, so that looks pretty good for the samples. Like I said, don't want them on the nebulosity. What I am going to do is I'm also going to remove some over here so I can demonstrate this flooded generation for you. So we obviously want these sample points here, but let's pretend like they weren't there, that your grid tolerance was too low and it missed this entire corner over here. And I'm gonna put my grid tolerance back down to one. You can either use, use the slider or type in the number yourself. We're going to enable flooded generation. And what flooded generation does, and if you hover over it, it'll give you a little tool tip here. Based on the sample point that I'm about to lay down, It'll add additional sample points based on the luminance of where I've selected on the image, as well as using the grid tolerance that we have set down here. So you wouldn't, you want to be careful with this, especially how I have all my points already laid out. If I have this too high and I use flooded generation, it's going to shoot it across the image more than I want it to. So I'm going to leave it at the default of one flooded generation. And when I come over here and add a sample point up in the top left corner, instead of it laying down just one sample point when I click, it'll lay down multiple based on what I've selected. So a little bit faster way of getting through it, 
it's you know it's putting in, that, in an additional tube based on my grid tolerance and the luminance of the spot that i selected so it, kind of like a shortcut it helps you get through it a little bit faster if you've got to put multiple points down all right so now that we have our sample points in place i'm going to take this one out we're going to go down to step number four our calculation so our interpolation method you should be familiar with rbf within serial it's the same mathematical formula used here we also have splines and krigging, I believe is how you pronounce that. Uh, again, mathematical formulas, even if I could explain to you how they're determining where, how the background extraction removes the gradients from your images, it would probably be a very boring video and we'd all be falling asleep where you guys would be fast forwarding through it. So best advice is play with it. RBF is generally the best way to go, the recommended one to use. You have your smoothing factor, just like we have in Cyril, how smooth between the sample points that gradient should be removed. And if we come over to the advanced on the right hand side again here, we also have um, for RBF your kernel type. So defaults thin plate, there's also quintic, cubic, and linear. Again, it just adds to the mathematical formula that's being used to remove the gradients from within your image. Just play with them. The defaults generally 90%, 95% of the time, I suppose, do a great job. Maybe if you have some really aggressive gradients that you're, that you're really struggling to get rid of, come through and play with your kernel type, come through and play with your interpolation method, go back and forth and see what works best for you. Uh, the second option for spline order is if you select splines for your interpolation method. So you have one through five. Again, more math, just play with the settings, see what works best for you. As far as the correction, Again, Cyril has the same thing as well as Pix and Site, but we have subtraction and division. Generally, we're always doing subtraction, but division can help you in some cases as well. While we're here, we'll cover the last two advanced options, and that's language. You can go English or you can go Deutsch, which is German. And then we have scaling. Scaling is actually the scaling of the user interface for the program. So if you want your buttons and text to be smaller or larger, go one way or the other. If you do make a change to the scaling, you'll have to close Graxpert and reopen it for that change to take effect. So we're going to close the advanced tab. Again, we have our sample point set. We're going to use the RBF interpolation method and simply click calculate background. Okay, so the background extraction is complete. I want to clean up my view a little bit so I can see what things look like. The first thing, you don't have to do this, but this is what I like to do is I come over to the reset sample points. So it takes my sample points off the screen and back down this aggressive stretch that we have. So 15% for this image probably would work just fine. Give me a little bit better view and it looks better. I know there's a lot of green. Again, color cameras are GGB. You have twice as many green pixels as you do red and blue. That'll all be fixed as we go through our processing workflow in Cyril. Um, but once it's done, you note up top, this tab says process. So that is the processed image. If we click down on this, we can go back and forth between the original and you can see our gradient and then processed and it's nice and smoothed out. You can see, see through all that beautiful green. Um, and then also there's a tab here for background. This is actually the gradient that it removes. So now you can see just the parts of the images that it has corrected for you. So we're going to go back up to processed and now we're ready to save this off and take it back into serial to continue with our processing workflow down here. Number five, saving. You have three different options, three different file formats you can save in. Both have a 16 and a 32 bit option. So we can go fits, TIFF or XISF, which is Pix and Sites format. We're going back into serial. So we're going to save as a 32 bit fits file. You can either save the background, which is this right here, save processed in an unstretched state. So it'll still be linear, which would be if we turn the stretch off, it would be like this, which is what we want because we got processing to do, or you can say save stretched and processed. So if I put my 15% back on and I say save stretched and process, this image will no longer be linear. It'll actually give me a, the 15% stretch that we're seeing right here. Maybe it's something you want to do, um, and it's up to you. I'm not telling you not to, but we can do better stretching in Serial or Pix Insight or, like I said, any in whatever program that you're using. So we are just, I am just going to say save process. It's asking me where to save it. That is my Cygnus Loop working directory, and you can see it took the name of the file that I originally opened. And it just appended Graxpert to the end of it. So I'm fine with that. We're going to click save. 
and then we'll come back over into Cyril and say open. There's our Graxpert file. Open that up. We're in an auto stretch right now. Like I said, it comes in linear. But there's the auto stretch with the background extraction finish. So at this point, now I would continue on with my workflow within Cyril for color calibration and stretching everything else. If you need a video on that, I've got a, a relatively new one for the new version 1.2.0. It's in release candidate one right now. Um, but I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're already familiar with doing background extraction and, and have a workflow down pat in Cyril as it is. But just want to show you, this is where you'd inject it in at. It's just another tool for your toolbox. So there you go. It does a really good job removing the background gradient. Maybe it's something you use as a replacement to background extraction in your current workflow, or maybe it's just something you keep over into the side in case you do have issues removing a background gradient using whichever processing tool that you're currently using. You always know they have that in your back pocket. Maybe it'll help you through some difficult gradients. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. appreciate everybody's watching. Like always, like, share, and subscribe. And I want to also say thank you to all my members. I appreciate you guys signing up. It really helps keep the channel going. Until next time, clear skies.